<laughs> it always makes me laugh. No more. Bhagavad Gita chapter 14, Soka 3, pretty sure we're on 3. Yes. Mama Yonir Mahad Brahma Tasmin Garbham Adhami Aham Sabhava Sarva Bhutanam Tato Bhavati Bharata. The total material substance called Brahman is the source of birth. And it is that Brahman that I impregnate, making possible the births of all living beings, O son of Bharata. This is an explanation of the world. Everything that takes place is due to the combination of Kestra and Kestra, Kestrajna, the body and the spirit soul. This combination of material nature and the living entity is made possible by the Supreme God himself. The Mahat Tava is the cause of all the total cosmic manifestation. And because in the total substance of the material cause, there are three modes of nature. It is sometimes called Brahman. The Supreme Personality impregnates that total substance and thus innumerable universes become possible. This total material substance, the Mahat Tattva, is described as Brahman in the Vedic literature. Tasmad etad brahma nama rupam anam cha jayate. Into that brahman, the seeds of the living entities are impregnated by the supreme person. The 24 elements beginning, beginning from earth, water, fire, and air are all material energy called maha brahman or the great brahman, the material nature. As is explained in the seventh chapter, beyond this, there is another superior nature, the living entity. In material nature, the superior nature is mixed by the will of the supreme personality of Godhead, and thereafter, all living entities are born of this material nature. The scorpion lays its eggs in piles of rice, and sometimes it is said that the scorpion is born out of rice. But the rice is not the, co the cause of the scorpion. Actually, the eggs were laid by the mother. Similarly, material nature is not the cause of the birth of the living entities. The seed is given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and they only seem to come out of, as products of material nature. Thus, every living entity, according to his past activities, has a different body created by this material nature, and the entity can enjoy or suffer according to his past deeds. The Lord is the cause of all manifestations of living entities in this material world. Text four, Sarva Yonisu Kunteya Murtaya Sambhavati Ya Tasman Brahma Mahad Yonair Aham Bija Prada Pitta. It should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature and that I am the seed giving father. In this verse, it is clearly explained that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the original father of all living entities. The living entities are combinations of the material nature and the spiritual nature. Such living entities are seen not only on this planet, but in every planet, even the highest where Brahma is situated. Everywhere, there are living entities. Within the earth, there are living entities, even within water and within fire. All these appearances are due to the mother, material nature, and Krishna's seed-giving process. The purport is that the living entities being impregnated in the material world come out and form at the, same, at the time of creation according to their past deeds. Text 5. Sattvam rajas tama iti guna prakriti sambhava 
Nibadnenti maha baho dehe dehinem avyayam. Material nature consists of the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance. When the living entity comes in contact with nature, he becomes conditioned by these modes. The living entity, because he is transcendental, has nothing to do with this material nature. Still, because he has become conditioned by the material world, he is acting under the spell of these three modes of material nature. Because living entities have different kinds of bodies, in terms of the different aspects of nature, they are induced to act according to that nature. This is the cause of the varieties of happiness and distress. Text six, Tatra Satvam Nir Malavat Praka Sakam Anamayam Sukha Sanjana Vanati Dhyana Sajana Kanaja. O sinless ones, O sinless one, the mode of goodness, being purer than the others, is illuminating and it frees one from all sinful reactions. Those situated in that mode develop knowledge, but they become conditioned by the concept of happiness. The living entities conditioned by, the mater by material nature are of various types. One is happy, other is very active, and another is helpless. All these types is psychological manifest manifestation. All these types of psychological manifestations are causes of the entity's conditioned status in nature. How they are differently conditioned is explained in this section of Bhagavad Gita. The mode of goodness is first considered. The effect of developing the mode of goodness in the material world is that one becomes wiser than those otherwise conditioned. A man in the mode of goodness is not so much affected by material miseries, and he has a sense of advancement in material knowledge. The representative type is the Brahmana, who is supposed to be situated in the mode of goodness. This sense of happiness is due to understanding that in the mode of goodness, one is more or less free from sinful reactions. Actually, in the Vedic literature, it is said that the mode of goodness means greater knowledge and greater sense and a greater sense of happiness. The difficulty here is that when a living entity is situated in the mode of goodness, he becomes conditioned to feel that he is advanced in knowledge and is better than others. In this way, he becomes conditioned. The best examples are the scientist and the philosopher. Each is very proud of his knowledge, and because they generally and because they generally improve their living conditions, they feel a sort of material happiness. This sense of advanced happiness is conditioned life in conditioned life makes them bound by the mode of goodness of material nature. As such, they are attracted toward working in the mode of goodness, and as long as they have an attraction for working in that way, they have to take some type of body in the modes of nature. Thus, there is no likelihood of liberation or of being transferred to the spiritual world. Repeatedly, one may become a philosopher, a scientist, or a poet, and repeatedly become entangled in the same disadvantages of birth and death. But, Due to the illusion of the material energy, one thinks that that sort of life is pleasant. Rajo Ragat Makam Vidi, Trishna Sangja Samud Bhavam, Tan Nibinati Kuntaya Karma Sanjaya Dehenam. The mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings, O son of Kunti, and because of this one is bound to material fruitive activities. The mode of passion is characterized by the attraction between man and woman. Woman has an attraction for man, and man has an attraction for woman. This is called the mode of passion. And when the mode of passion is increased, one develops the hankering for material enjoyment. He wants to enjoy sense gratification. For our sense gratification, a man in the mode of passion wants some honor in society or in the nation, and he wants to have a happy family with nice children, wife, and house. These are the products of the mode of passion. As long as one is hankering after these things, he has to work very hard. Therefore, it is clearly stated here that he becomes associated with the fruits of his activities and thus becomes bound by such activities. 
in order to please his wife, children, and society to keep up, and to keep up his prestige, one has to work. Therefore, the whole material world is more or less in the mode of passion. Modern civilization is considered to be advanced in the standards of the mode of passion. Formerly, the advanced condition was considered to be in the mode of goodness. If there is no liberation for those in the mode of goodness, what of those who are entangled in the mode of passion? Thomas Tviz Ajnana Jam Vidi Mohanam Sarva Dehinam Pramadalaseya Nidra His Tan Nibba Nati Bharata. O son of Bharata, the mode of ignorance causes the delusion of all living entities. The result of this mode is madness, indolence, and sleep, which bind the conditioned soul. In this verse, the specific application of the word to is very significant. This means that the mode of ignorance is a very peculiar qualification of the embodied soul. This mode of ignorance is just the opposite of the mode of goodness. In the mode of goodness, by development of knowledge, one can understand what is what. But the mode of ignorance is just the opposite. Everyone under the spell of the mode of ignorance becomes mad, and a madman cannot understand what is what. Instead of making advancement, one becomes degraded. The definition of the mode of ignorance is stated in Vedic literature. Under the spell of ignorance, one cannot understand the thing as it is. For example, everyone can see that his grandfather has died. And therefore, he will always die. Man is mortal. The children that he conceives will also die. So death is short. Still, people are madly accumulating money and working very hard all day and night, not caring for the eternal spirit. This is madness. In their madness, they are very reluctant to make advancement in spiritual understanding. Such people are very lazy. When they are invited to associate for spiritual understanding, they are not much interested. They are not even active like the man who is controlled by the mode of passion. Thus another symptom of one embedded in the mode of ignorance is that he sleeps more than is required. Six hours of sleep is sufficient, but a man in the mode of ignorance sleeps at least 10 or 12 hours a day. Such a man appears to always to be always dejected and is addicted to intoxicants and sleeping. These are the symptoms of a person, person conditioned by the mode of ignorance. Text nine. Satvam suke sanjayate raja karmani bharata janam arteya tu tama pramid sanjayate yuta. The mode of goodness conditions one to be happiness, conditions one to happiness, passion, conditions him to the fruits of action and ignorance to madness. A person in the mode of goodness is satisfied by his work or intellectual pursuit, just as a philosopher, scientist, or educator may be engaged in a particular field of knowledge and may be satisfied in that way. A man in the mode of passion and goodness may be engaged in fruitive activity. He owns as much as he can and spends for good causes. Sometimes he tries to open hospitals, give to charity institutions, etc. These are the signs of one in the mode of passion, and the mode of ignorance covers knowledge. In the mode of ignorance, whatever one does is neither good for him nor for anyone. Text 10. Rajas Tamas Kabhib Yuha Satvam Bhavanti Bharata Raja Satvam Tamas Keva Tama Satvam Rajas Tatha. Sometimes the mode of passion becomes prominent, defeating the mode of goodness, O son of Bharata. And sometimes the mode of goodness defeats passion. And at other times, the mode of ignorance defeats goodness and passion. In this way, there is always competition for, for supremacy. When the mode of passion is prominent, the modes of goodness and ignorance are defeated. When the mode of goodness is prominent, 
passion and ignorance are defeated. And when the mode of ignorance is prominent, passion and goodness are defeated. This competition is always going on. Therefore, one who is actually intent on advancing in Krishna consciousness has to transcend these three modes. The prominence of some certain mode of nature is manifested in one's dealings, in his activities, in eating, etc. All this will be explained in later chapters. But if one wants, he can develop by practice the mode of goodness and thus defeat the modes of ignorance and passion. One can similarly develop the mode of passion and defeat goodness and ignorance or one can develop the mode of ignorance and defeat goodness and passion. Although there are these three modes of material nature, if one is determined, he can be blessed by the mode of goodness and by transcending the mode of goodness, he can be situated in pure goodness, which is called the Vasudeva state, a state in which one can understand the science of God. By the manifestation of particular activities, it can be understood in what mode of nature one is situated. Text 11. Sarva Deva Resu Dehe Smin Prake Asa Upajate Gyanam Yada Tada Vidyad Vivridam Satvam Iti Yuta. The manifestations of the mode of goodness can be experienced when all the gates of the body are illumined by knowledge. There are nine gates in the body, two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, the mouth, the genital, genital and the anus. In every gate, when the symptom of goodness is illumined, it should be understood that one has developed the mode of goodness. In the mode of goodness, one can see things in the right position, one can hear things in the right position, and one can taste things in the right position. One becomes cleansed inside and outside. In every gate, there is development of the symptoms of happiness, and that is the position of goodness. I can pause here, 12. If we want me, I can keep reading a little bit more. I just want to check in. No, I think that's good. It's a lot of review. What? It's a lot of review. Yeah. So I guess who's not missing things she doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice does. way of thinking, though. It's a good reminder. The more sapphic we are, the more we can see, the more present we can be. And it's like an access point. Yeah, I just feel like for me, living in New York, living on Long Island, and maybe it's more of a mental thing, but I just feel like it's impossible for me to reach that sapphic state here. It's hard. I just, it's when you understand these three modes of nature, you you can really practice compassion for more people because it's like there's no hope for us here. It's just too like down downstate. I'm not talking about like upstate New York, but like this metropolitan New York, Long Island area. The suburb area, like in Sag Harbor, it's um different. Yeah, I guess it's different out there. It's like if you don't have a lot of space, you're gonna get agitated. And everyone's agitated by us because there's no space and you know, less resources and people get overwhelmed by that. I don't think it's natural for a human being to be in such a congested, contained area. You know what I mean? Like if you think about the Native Americans who lived here before us, they all lived in expansive spaces where you look out and you see expanse. Like there's something really um, congesting for the mind about like I can only see to the end of my backyard or like if I go across the street, I can only see across to my neighbor's house. Yeah. Like it's, there's no expansive space unless I go to a park, which I, we try to do a lot and it helps. It helps like calm the nervous system. I think that's why I love the beach so much. I mean, the yeah. about the solar eclipse coming and like, I'd love to witness it. I've never seen something like that. And so I'm debating getting up and, and going down to Long Beach 
because yeah, why not? Yes, see it then. But like I have to drive 20 minutes to go see the sunrise. <laughs> I don't mind. At least I can do that. Some people don't even have that. Well, it's pretty over Hempstead Lake too. There's some space there. At the park, at Hempstead Lake Park? Yeah. Oh, you can see it there? Oh, because that's much closer. Well, maybe, I mean, I could try that too. It's not going to be as nice as the beach. <laughs> yeah, I just like to be at the beach. So I was like, I'm. what else am I doing? You know? Yeah. I just have to get up early. You just have to do like 50 times as much sauna practice here. <laughs> yeah. We were in Maryland last weekend. And for my cousin's wedding, they met at Delaware State. So they had their wedding like 15 minutes away at this beautiful farm. And me and Mark were driving along and it was like every house had an acre. Oh, yeah. And there was so much space. And, you know, of course, we're zillowing because you can't stop yourself. And it's cheap, you know, like you don't have to be hustling like a maniac to make enough money just to live. Well, it's cheap relative because for them, it's not cheap. But it's cheap. I mean, like $150,000 for my size house plus like way more acreage. Oh, it's- yeah, no, I know. I know it's cheap to us, but like when you're a local... It doesn't. Yeah, I guess so. Like maybe they they're not getting paid. Like there might not be as many jobs or whatever. You know, there. Yeah, there might with COVID. There might not be as many jobs or anything. Yeah, I remember my mom like would always say that when I'd be like, I want to move away. She'd be like, You can't make money. The money you make here, you can't make in other places. And um, like that became, that became not true, like around 2017. Yeah. To 2019, like you could make the same amount of money you could make in our area. But then I think you're right. I think like COVID decimated that. Uh-huh. Um, I see so, that in Wilmington. Like it's you already see becoming, that in Wilmington. It's already becoming the development, the overdevelopment. Mm. Like, and it might happen in Mar- like when when I used to drive down 95, you didn't see a house forever, and now mm. you start seeing houses because they're developing, and you see all like the develop, and it, it did pause for a while because of like the 2008 burst and then there was another burst and COVID probably had a little bit of a pause but I don't think so I think COVID kept it going <laughs> but yeah it's so just now a I'm shame like, I know now it's gonna happen everywhere maybe up here will be like desolate because we're all fleeing <laughs> well you know we gotta buy acres that's it's so funny so we're it's at a farm right and it's like a beautiful farm and the sun is setting and it's gorgeous and me and my uncles and my dad and mom are like sitting on the porch at the farm on rocking chairs like looking out at the sunset and we're like we got to get acreage man we got to get like 20 acres somewhere yeah you know where nobody can develop it that's yeah oh that's see what happens sounds so nice it was like a hundred acre farm and someone bought it in 2017 for six hundred thousand dollars that murders me it murders me it's like when people were moving out of the city and they were going out to Suffolk and they would buy a house for like $30,000 and they had all this space, but they had like a quarter or half an acre, you know, like right for them. But now it's like, that's going to be the new thing is getting like this major farm. Oh my God. All the people. So we have, my family has a house in Sag Harbor and we like sort of dual grew up there slash here like you know we go out there still all the time like it got us through COVID being able to go out there but like all the city people have their vacation houses so everybody would be agitated from like July to August because all the city people will come out and they're awful but then they'd go away you know and like you could live a normal life and everybody's like very calm and you know like um country folk like they're they look out for each other and they're like very polite and sweet But with COVID, all the city people moved into their summer houses. So now it's been like total chaos there, like nonstop. (laughs) Well, that's when you said Sag Harbor. I'm like, it's probably not like that anymore. Because if you're dealing with all the people I'm dealing with in the city, it's not calm. (laughs) No, yeah, it's not calm there anymore. I'm wondering if like they're going to start moving back now that things are getting normal again and like things will calm down. Like the school district is like, so Sag Harbor is the best school district in the Hamptons. They had to open up a second building 
because they pulled all their kids out of the city schools and brought them out to the country it's so funny oh, yeah. but like it's like that rajastic consciousness that they brought because they're like still agitated from the city so they bring that rajastic consciousness into a sophic space i wonder if like over a certain amount of time they would calm down because the sattva would like but like that first couple of months was like they were really they were bringing the rajas man well, when I would go back and forth to school, I'm like, and I, before I was aware of any of these moves of nature, like I would go from Long Island as a 17, 18 year old person and drive down there. And I'd be with my roommate who was also from Long Island. And we would drive down and we were like, oh my God, it's going to take us two weeks to adjust because like <laughs> fast food down and nothing's fast. Everything's slow. Mm-hmm. It's like, and this is before I knew like yoga breathing and everything. And we would get so annoyed and we knew it. It was going to take us two weeks to yeah. adjust. Now when I go down there, because I'm self-aware, and I guess this is where that ignorance comes in that they were just talking about in the book. Like if I'm in a city and I'm going out to Stag Harbor, I know on my ride out there that I can flip and I can mm-hmm. create that sattva. Mm-hmm. But I think so many of those rajasic um, city people are ignorant and they don't know. They and so they just carry their agitatedness with them. So now when I go down to Wrightsville and Wilmington, I, by the time I get down there, I'm like, this is just life down there. It's not too slow. It's just not crazy fast. Totally. Oh my God. So we're sitting at a restaurant and my husband and my father we're going to have a nervous breakdown because they weren't bringing the food fast enough. It wasn't exactly what I said on the menu. Me and my mom were like, you guys need to calm. You need to <laughs> calm down. Like we're not in New York anymore. Just okay. calm down. Yeah. Everywhere my dad went, he was like upset with the people at the hotel. Cause they didn't like, you know, like he like pre-registered online, but then so they gave the room away whoever came first he's like you can't run a hotel like that I'm like we are not in New York you have to calm down yeah my my husband did it in Europe too I'm like you don't understand we sit at the table after and we talk as long as we want they're not gonna bring the check until you ask for it like this is not you're not being rushed constantly, which is that rajastic energy of like rush, 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 rush. And you become aggressive when you rush, right? Like nobody's ever good enough when you're rushing. Nothing is ever good enough. And it puts you into a, a sour mind state all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like how many times have you walked in the city and somebody like elbows you, right? Cause you're like either in their way or not. You're going too slow. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Or they're like tailgate walking. Yeah. Like yeah. on your mm-hmm. heels. And it's like, just go around me, dude. Yeah. It's funny when people like everybody in the South is obsessed with New York. And like if they haven't been, then they want to come. And I'm like, why? Why do you, you guys have the life down here? I know. I know they don't realize because they're in it. I saw, oh my God, what you said, Dominic. I saw a TikTok the other day. Uh-huh. And it starts off with like this guy holding his coffee and he's walking through Manhattan and, and you have like the headline. It's like, what to do, the best thing to do when you come to New York City and you think it's going to be a travel thing. And he's like, don't walk slowly in front of me. <laughs> I mean, I get, I'm, I'm considering going into work on Monday. Oh yeah. For of reasons. And I haven't been in the city since COVID. So um which I guess I'll if I decide to go I'll have to let you guys know because I don't know if I would be able to join Sadhana um but yeah I'm Eric's like what's making you like want to go in and I told him the reasons but I haven't committed to it because I don't even want to open my mouth in case I retract my decision because I'm like (laughs) I really feel like dealing with that Mm. so but I feel for me, I can control it. I can like, I'm aware of it and I can be like, whatever, go around me or whatever. Yeah. It's so crazy. I feel like we are at a, a big disadvantage here. We have to work extra hard to get to that sattva state. Yeah, you're right. Yep. It's not, it's not like weaved into our daily living because it's like rush, 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 you know, like a, when I leave my house in Wrightsville, I don't have to check Google Maps to see how long or which route I should take or where the traffic's building up. I just go. And it's going to take me the same amount of time to get to every place, no matter what time of day it is. 
here, you're not leaving during rush hour in the morning or evening. You're not doing anything on the weekend. God forbid you're going anywhere on a Friday when mm-hmm. everyone from the city's going anywhere. Mm-hmm. It just makes like, I'm, a, yeah. And then even like parking, like you Domenico witnessed it at Long Beach. I mean, we didn't park, we didn't have, we were like far away, but it wasn't that big of a deal, but it's every, it's just over congested. Yeah, it's too many people everywhere. They're all, and everyone's at just like, so I try to, you know, with Isabella, I'm always trying to create a topic environment for her. You know, yesterday, you know, I didn't have the phone on me or any technology. We were like in the garden all morning. The second I look at my phone, I got some nasty email from some like psychotic person who's like attacking the studio because we don't have enough gentle classes for them. Even though they didn't pay for a membership, the entire closure and the only people who did didn't want gentle classes. <laughs> I like couldn't even respond to the email. I had to take a moment because like the Raj just like gets in, right? Yeah. And then I was agitated and I was like, okay, I'm going to do my deep breathing. I'm not going to answer the email today. I'll answer it tomorrow from a sophic place. Can't meet Rajas with Rajas, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it leaks in here. It leaks in. I hear you, ma'am. Oh, it definitely does. All right, let's do some breath and meditate. Let's try to get back to Safa. Now we're all agitated thinking about all our Rajas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'll be okay. <laughs> that's why we have to know what our tools are. It's one thing to show up to this practice and do what the teacher's telling you, but if you don't know how to do it on your own, you're, you're going to be SOL. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm nice and tall, right then through the nose, out through the nose. Then bring your right hand over to the nose, close the nostril with the thumb, inhale through the left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right, close right, exhale left. Continue on a few more rounds of breath. I'm going to transition to bumblebee breath. If you want to join me, you'll close the ears with the thumbs, piece fingers over the eyes, inhale and exhale through the nose, creating a humming sound at the back of the throat. It'll create vibrations in the body. You'll do three to five rounds. Mm-hmm. Set the timer, you'll join us when you're ready, finishing up whatever you're working on.
bringing hands to your heart. Namaste. Have a beautiful day, everybody.